All right, now finally let's move to weaning of the ventilator. Um, and basically weaning means the process through which we assess patient's readiness to come off the ventilator. And it's, it's not difficult to decide which patient is ready for weaning and who's not. The, before we go through the criteria, one, two, three, four, five, remember you need to get your patient off the ventilator as soon as possible. So you have to be aggressive in that manner. Don't leave the patients on the ventilator for no good reason because you increase their mus muscle weakness, respiratory muscle weakness, risk of infection, risk of lung injuries all these uh, risk associated with being on sedations so <clears throat> the first thing is remember that you have to assess your patient readiness every day if he's ready for weaning the sooner the better again remember to wean them and try to extubate as soon as possible how do you tell every day i come and see my patients i see you that's what i do i look if they are require, requiring minimal ventilatory support and the definition of that, that requiring 40% or less of FiO2 and PEEP of 8 or less and with that I'm having a good ABG. The patient has adequate PO2, uh, the PCO2 is good, the pH is good. I'm not going to exhibit somebody who's still severely acidotic, absolutely, or the CO2 is still very high compared to the baseline CO2 or oxygenation barely hovering in high 50s low 60s on these settings again these are general rules you will see some excep exceptions with some patients that you know them very well and you know their baseline so that's the first thing the second thing hemodynamically stable i'm not going to start weaning in a patient on multiple vasopressors still hypotensive or still spiking high fever or the ABG and gas exchange, ex exchange still bad. So it's very important that the patient is hemodynamically stable in terms of vital signs and in terms of gas exchange and ABG. Third is minimal respiratory secretion and usually ask the nurses about how much respiratory secretion we getting through the ET tube when they suction. If it's still heavy secretions or a lot of thick secretions, I usually try to get that better first, whether by treating the underlying pneumonia, if it's pneumonia, or by giving some mucomis or bicarb with the bronchodilators, anyway, uh, and the frequent suctioning, but I want to see minimal respiratory secretion before proceeding with weaning. And very important that the patient is awake enough with adequate cough reflex, the awake enough that he's able to trigger his own breath. We're not going to rely on any time trigger or ventilator trigger births. It has to be all initiated by the patient. So he has to be awake enough and adequate cough reflex to clear respiratory secretions. And the last thing, very important not to forget that there is significant improvement from the underlying problem or insult that led to mechanical ventilation. A severe pneumonia, for example, or pulmonary edema or severe shock, cardiogenic shock, septic shock, whatever. So these conditions also I need to see significant improvement to say the patient is ready for winning. I'm not gonna, if he's still on multiple vasopressors, even if his oxygen is stable, I'm not gonna go and win. Uh, this condition has to improve first. So if you see your patients having meet, uh, has met this criteria, then next step is move, let's move to how to do a winning trial.